I recently visited Asheville, North Carolina to check out if it was a place that would be great in climate change. And I was surprised to learn that Asheville actually is the host of a lot of climate research already and collecting climate data since post-World War II. I'm walking on a beautiful day in Asheville and we talk about the weather and climate at the start of our conversations because it is the most important thing. So I'm gonna be talking about the weather and climate with the guys from NEMAC who are doing amazing work. Welcome to UNC Asheville's NEMAC. NEMAC is the National Environmental Modeling and Analysis Center. So we work with a lot of different uh, science producers and help them and try to figure out we're in the space of translating science and information to various different science users. We have a new reality in, in the sense that communities across the nation are facing more extremes in, in the weather of precipitation and, and more extremes related to drought. And climate resiliency is about being prepared for what's coming down in the future. The city of Asheville has partnered with NEMAC to do a, cli a climate resilience assessment, so essentially kind of looking at at the data and, and the trends that we're expecting um, and to better understand uh, what may be happening in the future and looking at various vulnerabilities, increased flooding or landslides or drought. These are various different things that wildfire. Um, these are all you know, very real uh, impacts that the city may be facing more frequently in the future. Asheville is probably one of the first cities in, in Western North Carolina that is that is doing resilience planning and a resilience assessment, I, I believe. It is also becoming more common for cities to be hiring sustainability directors. For anyone really to be climate ready and to understand you know, what they may be facing, it really depends on where you're living now, right? Because every region of the country, we're not all facing the same impacts to climate change, right? Some folks in you know, the coastal areas may be dealing with a reality of sea level rise, right? Other areas, it's going to be much more wildfire related, more, you know, increased frequency of wildfire and intensity and size. In other places, it's going to be drought. You know, it, it just kind of depends on where you are. In North Carolina, some of the uh, coastal changes we've seen has been a lot of the erosion of the barrier islands. Uh, these are these structures that are there to help protect us against wind energy, wave energy, and it helps, uh, it's, they're also a good draw for tourism. And, um, so it's, it's impacting some of our wetlands and uh, local community infrastructure as well too. So I've seen some of the change in the migration of those um, patterns as they've been eroded away with heavier and heavier storms. There are other places in the country that are not going to be affected as as severely or as frequently as other places. Asheville itself is somewhat of a, a tourist destination and so we uh, already see a lot of people moving here in general just to be in the, our location and the mountains and enjoying you know the city and the night you know the restaurants and all the wonderful things that Asheville has to offer. Um, there has been you know some talk around about Asheville also being a place for people to retreat to in case, you know, in, in places where we could, because the impacts we see may not be as bad as others, but that's all relative. It's all depends on kind of where you're coming from. I think the biggest issue we have, and, and I've, I talk about this tension between scientists and science users, and that's kind of where we have to play in between is that tension. Trying to make a scientist understand that people are going to focus in on where they live and play, as opposed to the overall picture, which is almost impossible for them to understand. One of the things that we talk about a lot at NEMAC is in 2016, we look at FEMA's budget for disasters. It was, I think it was 13 point something billion dollars. The actual cost of the disasters in 2016 was, I think it was 16 billion. And that leaves you with a deficit of $2.8 billion. 2017 numbers were very similar. 30 to 40% of it is not covered by anybody. So who's, who's affected by that? That's the type of stuff that changes conversations. Yogi Berra has a great quote, and he says, the future ain't what it used to be.